In this video we're going to look at the 2012 US presidential election. We'll try to look at the data and figure out whether there's a positive correlation between campaign spending and number of votes received. We'll try to see who got better value from their campaign spending, Democrats or Republicans. And then suppose you create your own political party using um, the data for you know these five parties here how much and we create this trend line we're going to figure out how much um, how many votes you would expect to get for your candidate say you had your own party if you spent one million dollars hundred million dollars a thousand million dollars right and then we're going to try to figure out look does campaign spending actually cause an increase in votes or are they just two things that that just kind of occur simultaneously so um, and we'll we'll try to see if I want, what I want you to do is is give a reason why and then give a reason why not because what we have to understand is putting up a nice little graph like this doesn't prove anything you know it doesn't prove that spending actually causes number of votes it definitely proves that they go hand in hand that they're correlated that you expect both to happen at the same time but it doesn't mean that the spending actually caused the votes right so we'll, we'll get to that so just looking at the data we've got the parties here Republican Democrat Libertarian Green Constitutional Party we've got the um, millions of dollars spent on their campaign Republicans 992 million Democrats 986 million Libertarians 2.3 million Green 0.4 million, Constitutional 0.2 million, and so on, and the number of votes they received, 61 million, 65 million, 1.3 million, half a million, 0.1 million, right? And so what we did, what I did was I took those, um, and we'll just ignore this last column here, I just did that last column for fun, but we're just going to take these two columns and plot that, you see, so for example, uh, this point here, this point here is the um, Republicans, they spent slightly more than the Democrats, six million more. I mean, but, you know, about the same. I mean, six million is a drop in the ocean if you're, when you're talking in terms of, you know, nine, almost a billion dollars. It, it, it basically the same. They got, um, so so they, they spent 992 million and they got a return of 61 million votes. And so that's Republicans here, right? Or uh, Democrats, that's these guys here, okay? They they made an investment of nine hundred and eighty six billion dollars in the campaign and got a, a return of sixty five million votes. So that's the Democrats. Okay. Now, um, down here we have the third party con candidates that uh, nobody even knows about. Well, a lot of people. So, for example, the Libertarian Party did the best out of those. They spent two point three million dollars and and got a return of one point three million votes. Okay, so that's the Libertarian Party, and then you got your Greens and your Constitutional Party, right? So we plotted those data, and and just as it's like from the data alone, just just looking at the, just kind of forget about the line, but just looking at the data points, looking at the data points, does there appear to be a positive correlation between campaign spending and number of votes received? I.e., um, does the number of votes increase or seem to increase as spending increases yes or no you see what I'm saying what do you think just from looking at the data as the spending increases does the number of votes increase Pierce it, doesn't it? The spending increases, the number of votes does appear to increase, increase, right? In general, I mean, this is not not much spending, lots of spending, not much votes, lots of votes. So you would say, and I'm not saying now this isn't a, a question as does the the spending cause the increase in votes. This is just asking whether they're correlated. Okay, and the answer to that is a definite yes. This is this is a fact that that. Uh, as spending increases, votes increases. Now, we're not trying to say that the spending causes the votes. We're just trying to say that they're correlated. Like, if, if you were to have a party that spent a billion dollars, uh, you would expect that party to get lots of votes. I mean, uh, and we're not saying that the, the spending causes it, we're just saying that, they're, that they're, they are correlated. So, in any case, uh, this uh, interesting question, who got better value from the campaign spending, the Democratic Party or the Republican Party? Okay. So I just made a little uh, column here just for fun because I thought it would be interesting. But if you take the Republican Party that spent $992 billion, okay, and you divide that by the number of votes they got, 61 
okay and you come up with 16.26 so Republicans spent sixteen dollars and twenty six cents for each vote right so that's that's the uh, the amount the Democrats if you take uh, 986 divide that by 65 they spent fifteen dollars and seventeen cents for each vote okay and um, so based on those numbers who got the best value right I mean, who like like well well the point is that um, the Democrats spent less per vote, right? So they got a better return for their investment, basically, right? Fifteen dollars and seventeen compared to sixteen dollars twenty six. And the earth point I want you to see is that the Democratic um, data point is above the line. See, Democrats are above the line. So they're doing better than the trend line. They're um, doing better than they should have, so to speak. Uh, you know, compared to the average, so to speak, right? So who got better value from the campaign spending? The answer to that would be Democratic Party got better value, right? Um, but uh, <laughs> I just think it's fascinating when you look at the other parties. I mean, especially if you take the Green Party. Only spent point four million four hundred thousand. He got half a million votes. That's only eighty cents a vote. You know, if you think about that. So um, I just think that's kind of kind of fascinating. And, and all these three, like Libertarian, Constitutional, and Green, they spend very little money for their votes. So they get they got great value. And in fact, all those points, even though we can't see it, because I mean these numbers are so much smaller than the Democrats and Republicans. But all these points are in fact above the line. They're all doing. They're all punching above their weight. They're doing way better. Um, you know, so you can actually call them in, in one twisted twist of logic in, in a way. You can actually call them more popular because you know they don't have to do as much work to get a vote as the Democrats and Republicans. These two have to really spend a lot of money and you know put out them flyers and advertisements and everything else uh, to get their votes. Whereas the third parties, I mean, they're doing a lot, spending a lot less for for a lot more. So it's, I think it's kind of interesting. Anyway, so. Um, suppose you create your own political party, um, and then you have your political candidate, right? Now, using the trend line, how many votes would you expect to get for your candidate if you spend $1 million on his or her campaign? How do we answer that? Well, we just go to the trend line, y equals 0 0.063 times x plus 0 0.58, right? And um, we just take this, ignore the r equals that for now, we just take this uh, equation, y equals 0 0.063 um, times x plus 0 0.58, and we just plug in uh, 1, not 1 million, just 1, because x and y are already given in millions, okay? So you just plug in 1, okay, and if you calculate that, do, 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 zero point, whoops, what is it, zero point zero six three times one uh, plus zero point five eight, we get zero point six four three, okay, million. Okay, what does that mean? So our X, our input, was the money spent on the campaign, our output, uh, number of votes would we expect, we would expect. And the number of votes we would expect is 0 0.643 million, or 643,000. About 643,000 votes is what we would expect if we spent a million dollars on our um, on our campaign. Um, and it, you know, think of a real life example. I don't know, but if if uh, whether you you were there for it or you heard about it or you can read up on it but in 1992 there was indeed an independent candidate uh Ross Perot who did just that put spent um uh, I think it was close to 60 million dollars which is a lot in 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 that time because of inflation you know we're we're talking you know, you got to spend a billion to win a presidential election that's the way it is but like in 1992 60 million was was uh was was enough to compete and he did get uh, he did get a good uh, 20 20 20% 20 of votes or so so you know so he kind of proved that 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 maybe there is this is causal maybe spending does in fact cause 
people to vote for you. Maybe the, the advertisements do actually work. So, um, so that's something to, to think about. Anyway, so if you spent a hundred million dollars on your political party's candidate, okay, for president, how many votes would you expect to get, based on the on the trend line? So again, it's the same thing. You just plug in. 0 0.063 times x plus 0 0.58, right? And see what you get. So let's say you spend a hundred million dollars, you're just gonna plug in 100, right? So Okay, so um, this would come out to be uh, 0 0.063 times 100 plus 0 0.58, 6.88. Uh, million, right? Remember, X and Y are both measured in millions, right? So, and Y is 6.88, that's 6.88 million, of course, uh, votes. So, if you spend a hundred million dollars, you'd expect almost seven million votes, right? If you spend a thousand million dollars, what would you expect to get in votes? So, press pause and do that one yourself. Okay, I hope you pressed pause and tried it. In that case, you would go 0, 0 0.063 times 1,000 plus 0 0.58. Okay, and that gives... So that should give... Um, so you plug 1,000 in here, <coughs> and that should get 63.58 8 million. Okay. So basically, a thousand million dollars is a billion dollars. So if 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 you're spending a billion dollars on your on the on your 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 count candidates um, campaign, then you might expect that you have a chance of actually winning, right? So um, where are we at now? Does campaign spending cause an increase in votes? And the 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 thing about just throwing up this data, we have not proven that the spending on advertisements and, and everything else actually causes people to go out and vote for the candidates. We haven't proven that. Um, so that that takes uh, another level of um, research to actually prove that point. What we've proven is they're correlated, with, that they occur together. If you got more spending, you have more votes. I mean, that these things occur together. We're not saying that the spending actually caused the votes. So, could you give a reason, um, maybe why, like, it, just in real life, just for fun, give a reason why spending causes votes, and then why spending doesn't cause an increase in votes. Okay, because there's, there's two arguments to this. So, basically, we have the correlation but we haven't proven that campaign spending causes an increase in votes and and, and you can there's just, there's an argument either way so press pause and give your opinion why or why not and then I'll give mine and see what we come up with okay I hope you press pause and give your give and give your opinion on that why spending causes uh, votes um, you could say well because it's just like advertising anything, isn't it? I mean, the product that, that gets advertised the most is going to uh, get the most sales. And, and, and that's the same with... Uh, it's just it's the same as any other product that's advertised. And so it could easily be argued that, yes, campaign spending does indeed... Um, Cause an increase in in votes, just like just like just like anything, and and you could also argue when you look at this that in fact um, the the two top parties really do have to spend a lot of money per person, in fact, to get their vote. Whereas the third party candidates they they pick up votes quite easily. I mean, these guys are picking up for two dollars or less, whereas the the top part the top parties are two are pick, pick, picking up for over fifteen dollars each. So. So basically, campaign ads gain votes. That's the argument for. You spend money on the ads, and that gains votes. It can change people's minds. They hear it on the radio, they see it on the TV, and the papers, and everything else. Okay. Now, what's the argument against this, if there even is one? Any idea? Press pause and give your opinion if you haven't done so yet. 
So the argument against the fact that, that spending causes an increase in votes would be something like, look, these two parties are already very popular. People are already going to vote for them either way. And in fact, they're already going to contribute to them anyway. Um, and so it's almost like the popularity of the two main parties causes the increase in spending and the increase uh, and, and the the um, the large spending and the large number of votes simultaneously. So the argument why spending doesn't cause an increase in votes would be that um, the popularity of Dems and Reps uh, well, this is one argument anyway. Th there's other ways of looking at it, but let's, we could say the popularity of Democrats and Republicans causes both um, large campaign spending and large number of votes for each party. Okay, so they're already popular. They're going to get lots of campaign spending. They're going to get lots of votes, and that's just the way it is, right?